Hello again, my loving to learn friends. It's been way too long. I hope you all have missed me as much as I've missed you and doubly as much as I've missed talking about the DMV test. And while we may be missing each other and all the test talk, one thing we don't want to be missing is any more questions to our DMV test. Real quick, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. And what the heck, why not drop us a comment too? Okay, let's cut the chit chat and let's get right into it, shall we? Here's what's on today's DMV test prep menu. We've got 20 new questions that we were able to harvest from the DMV this year, all served with a healthy side of explanation and a few extra servings of delectable graphics to make everything just a little bit easier to swallow. So put on that driver's ed bib because it's time to dig in and get a little bit messy, starting with question number 20. When you park on a hill, your vehicle could roll due to an equipment failure. Remember to A, leave the vehicle in neutral, B, set the parking brake, or C, set the parking brake and leave the vehicle in park. The correct answer is C, set the parking brake and leave the vehicle in park. When you're parking on a hill, make sure to do two important things. First, engage your parking brake or emergency brake. And second, for a standard transmission, you know, a stick shift, leave it in gear. And for an automatic transmission, put it in park. This way you'll keep your car from rolling down the hill and into traffic, which could lead to a serious accident. Safety first. Question number 19. You just sold your vehicle. You must notify blank within five days. A, the CHP, B, the DMV, or C, your insurance provider. Correct answer is B, the DMV. When you sell or hand over a vehicle to someone else, it's important to let the DMV know within five days. You can easily take care of this by filling out the notice of transfer and release of liability online. And this way you ensure that you're no longer responsible for the vehicle and its associated liabilities. The last thing you want is someone getting into an accident in the car you just sold and all of their ticket and related insurance fees going against you and your driving record. Next question, number 18. You must drive slower than the posted speed limit a, in bad weather and or heavy traffic, B, during morning hours, or C, at all times. The correct answer for this one is A, in bad weather and or heavy traffic. In California, there's something called the basic speed law, which essentially means you should never drive faster than what's safe considering the current conditions. Sometimes you might need to go slower than the posted speed limit, and this could be due to conditions like weather, uh, the speed of other vehicles on the road, the road surface quality, so whether it's smooth, it's gravel, it's wet, it's dry, etc. Um, or if there are bicyclists or pedestrians around. It's all about keeping the road safe for you and everyone else by adjusting your speed accordingly. Too many people answer incorrectly that you must drive slower than the limit at all times, which is not true because you can drive at the speed limit when it's safe. Now you know. Question number 17. A blue curb means A, parking for mail delivery only, B, parking for disabled persons with a special placard or license plate, or C, parking for disabled persons. The correct answer is B, parking for disabled persons with a special placard or license plate. Now let's talk about those cool blue curbs. They're like VIP parking for disabled folks who have an all access VIP pass, known as a valid disabled person placard or disabled person license plate. Without that pass, even if you are disabled, you cannot park there. That's why answer C, parking for disabled persons, is incorrect. And these parking spots are a big help for people with disabilities because they offer them a convenient place to park. And it's super important to respect these spaces and leave them open for those who truly need them. So please do not park there unless you've got the proper VIP placard or plates. Question number 16. Which of these traffic signal lights directs a driver to slow down and cross the intersection carefully? A, flashing red, B, solid red, or C, flashing yellow? The correct answer is C, flashing yellow. Now let's discuss traffic signals for a moment. We all know that a solid red light means you should come to a complete stop. But what about flashing lights? A flashing red light is essentially like a stop sign. You stop and then proceed when it's safe. On the other hand, a flashing yellow signal light is a cautionary sign. 
You don't have to stop for it, but you should reduce your speed and be extra cautious as you approach the intersection. Question number 15. Which of these lanes may a driver enter within 200 feet of an intersection where they plan to turn right? A, bus lane, B, HOV lane, or C, bike lane? Correct answer is C, bike lane. You know what's kind of surprising? Some drivers don't realize that it's not just okay, but it's actually the right thing to do, entering the bike lane before making a right turn. So here's the deal. When you're making a right turn at an intersection or into a driveway, you can and should merge into the bike lane, but keep it within 200 feet of where you plan to turn, as long as it's safe, of course. If there's already a bicycle in the bike lane, then you must merge in behind them and give them the right of way. Question number 14. If you're an adult, the safest precaution you can take regarding the use of cell phones and driving is A. Only use your cell phone in hands-free mode when necessary. B. Keep your phone within easy reach so you will not need to take your eyes off the road. Or C. Review the number before answering a call. The correct answer is A. Only use your cell phone in hands-free mode when necessary. All right, so here's the scoop on the cell phone usage law. If you're 18 or older, you cannot use a regular handheld cell phone while driving because it has to be a hands-free deal. But if you're younger than 18, no cell phones or any electronic gadgets are allowed while driving, not even hands-free ones, except when you're making an emergency call to the authorities. Question number 13, with a class C driver's license, a person may drive a A, light rail train, B, car, van, or pickup truck, or C, semi-truck. Correct answer is B, car, van, or pickup truck. All right, so now let's break down the driver's license jargon. So you've got class A and class B licenses, mainly for big rig drivers and commercial vehicles. But for us regular people, like you and me, the Class C license is where it's at for driving your everyday car or truck around California. With a Class C, you're good to go for handling two axle vehicles that weigh up to 26,000 pounds or three axle vehicles weighing under 6,000 pounds. One important note, if you've got a Class C, you cannot tow more than one vehicle behind you. Bottom line, your standard Class C lets you drive normal sized cars and trucks. Next question, number 12. There's a school bus ahead of you in your lane with flashing yellow lights. You should A. Stop, then proceed when you think all the children have exited the bus. B. Slow to 25 miles per hour and pass cautiously. Or C. Slow down and prepare to stop. Correct answer is C. Slow down and prepare to stop. When it comes to school buses, we all know what's up with those flashing red lights and the stop sign arm, right? Well, it's like a big stop sign for everyone on the road. Ignoring it not only puts kids at risk, but can also land you a hefty ticket. But what about those flashing yellow lights on a school bus? Well, think of it as a, a friendly heads up. When you see those yellows, it's like the bus is saying, hey, slow down and get ready to hit the brakes. It means the bus is gearing up to make a stop and let the kiddos hop off. So just like a yellow traffic light warns you that red is coming, those flashing yellows on a bus are your cue to be ready to stop if necessary. Next question, number 11. A driver who is involved in a collision should report it to the DMV within A, 15 days, B, 10 days, or C, 30 days. The correct answer is B, 10 days. Every driver involved in a collision must file a report of traffic accident occurring in California SR1 with the DMV within 10 days if there is more than $1,000 in property damage or an injury, no matter how minor, or death resulting from the collision. You can have your license suspended if you fail to do so. These number questions are always tricky, but using age-old nursery rhymes to remember them can definitely help. This is a favorite one of mine that Grandma Liz used to tell me at bedtime. Hush, dear baby driver, don't stay silent and still when there's injury, death, or a thousand dollar bill. Then, my friend, the DMV you must tell within 10 days or you might not fare so well. True story. She used to tell me that every single night. All right, fellow self-educators, we're officially at the halfway mark. 
While there were some toughies in the first 10, the truth is only about 15% of test takers were making mistakes on those questions. The next 10, however, are getting progressively harder and we've got some real humdingers that stump over 50% of test takers. So put down the remote and don't go away. Oh wait, I forgot we're on YouTube. <laughs> well then, just stay tuned for part two of this video series. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you very momentarily. Until then, from Permit Quiz Liz and everyone at Drivers at Direct, please stay safe out there.